I'm Laura. I'm Laura's sister, Jess. We both carry the BRCA1 gene. This is my baby, Max, and he was had through the PGD program at the Royal Hospital for Women. And I'm really thrilled to say that he does not have the BRCA gene. In our family, there's mum and dad, and just me and Jess. And mum was diagnosed with breast cancer at 41 years old. I was older when she went through her experience of finding out that she had the BRCA gene. I have a few memories of my mum sort of crying and apologising to us and sort of expressing guilt about potentially having passed this gene on to us, but she wasn't really obviously to know. It was only when I was older I really understood what it would mean for me um, and for my sister that we would have to really think about getting tested. I sort of had concerns about having to have, you know, those preventative surgeries and what that might do to my appearance and, you know, whether or not I was kind of defective, I guess. At 26, I remember coming back from the gym and I felt a slight pain under my arm and I remember feeling um, a lump. I was living in Melbourne at the time. I went to a GP and she sent me to have a biopsy at a specialist breast clinic. I remember seeing the specialist straight after the biopsy and she said to me, I'm gonna say it's cancer, it's breast cancer. And I remember the first thing that I felt was guilt. Um, guilt to be telling my father this, my mum. I thought, you know, at 26, you're supposed to be talking about promotions at work or engagements and yeah, that they were gonna have to be dealing with breast cancer again. Um, I came straight back to Sydney and was referred to the Royal Hospital for Women. There, both my sister and I had genetic testing and my mum came with us and I remember she was feeling extremely nervous. The results came back positive for both of us. We suspected Laura was going to be positive at that point, but I didn't feel like it was possible that lightning was going to strike twice in the same place. Uh, so I was actually pretty shocked when my result came back positive as well. <laughs> Far out, you were fast. Treatment started, which involved six rounds of chemotherapy. After I got through chemotherapy, I had to have a double mastectomy. The last part of treatment was radiation and this was almost a year on. It was about 14 months of treatment. I remember just feeling like it was all a big setback. I had a prophylactic double mastectomy in 2017. I booked in to have the surgery done as soon as Laura was done with her treatments. And then also I started to wonder about options for my future family. And that's where the PGD conversation came in. So the pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD service for short, is an IVF service in which we biopsy embryos before we transfer them into the woman to ensure that they're not affected with a genetic disease that we're worried about. So if a couple have a genetic disease and they don't want to pass it on to their children, we can test the embryo before we transfer it and make sure the embryo is not affected and by only transferring unaffected embryos, we can ensure that their children aren't affected with a genetic disease. I was really lucky that I was told about it by the genetic counsellor, but I went to have a chat to my GP and she happened to refer me to Dr. Rachel Rogers. I took my partner along and we went and had a consultation with her and we were really very sort of excited by the prospect of, of what could be done and he felt just as passionate about the gene stopping in our family now, but we were quite taken aback. It was looking like it might cost us up to $100,000 realistically to be able to have a baby and we just didn't have that money. I first met Jess in 2020. She came to my private rooms because she wanted IVF with PGD. We started the process, but then she found out the costs associated with private IVF with PGD, which are in the tens of thousands of dollars. 
and she absolutely couldn't afford that. At that point, Dr. Rogers let me in on her dream, which was to set up a publicly funded PGD program at the Royal. And she told me if I could be just a little bit more patient, perhaps I could be the first patient. And at that point, I felt I had more time than money, so we waited. My fertility journey was much longer than we expected. We were able to get two embryos that were negative for the gene out of seven rounds of IVF. We felt very grateful to the team and very well supported. Without the program, I'm 100% certain that, that we wouldn't have been able to, to have our baby. My baby Max was delivered by a caesarean section and the most overwhelming feeling when he arrived in my arms was relief. Relief that we had a, a healthy baby and also a relief that this gene was no longer going to be a part of my family's future. PGD is so important. We do the IVF at the Royal Hospital for Women, but we send the embryo cells off to a private company for testing. It's much cheaper than an exclusively private service, but it still does cost a few thousand dollars and patients can need several cycles in order to conceive. I would like to bring it into the Royal as a completely Medicare-based service so women and couples can access the service at no cost. Therefore, it would be affordable for everyone. Not only was the PGD at the Royal a gift to me and my husband, it's a gift to all future generations of my family. My baby Max is named after my mother's father, the first known carrier in our family of the BRCA gene. Thanks to donations, we have eliminated this gene from our family and I can look at my baby every day and know he's healthy. I'm beyond grateful.